So, remember when I said I probably wasn't going to do another video about Vanderstank? Yeah, I lied. I didn't mean to. I genuinely didn't believe I was going to make a video about them again. Maybe a little bit of a deep dive or talk about symbols as suggested by a friend. But it wasn't until January 9th that I became determined to do another video on the curious tale of Vanderstank when a user named Chris messaged me. Not only did Chris leave a couple comments on the video, but he also emailed my personal email to ask if I wanted to do an interview. I began shaking. What had I got myself into? Had I pissed off the hornet's nest? Chris was a user that I had found several times while researching, but never really understood how he had gotten himself involved. Was he a player? A genuine member of the cult? Was he a real person, or was he a character within the story? I continued shaking, all the way to the next day, when Chris and I talked over Discord, some of which I had recorded. While I had about seven or eight questions, anticipating just a quick interview, what had ended up happening was Chris and I talking over Discord for about five hours on a gloomy Sunday. It was an interesting and genuinely strange afternoon that in hindsight was the most enlightening afternoons I had had in a while. Chris's resources and information was invaluable. First thing he wanted to clear up for me was the belief behind Discordianism, of which I learned is a rather real belief system. From what I'm able to gather, Discordianism is something of a parody religion. The views are supported by the Principa Discordia, the same that Torque is seen reading in the final video on the Barbets channel. Some of the symbols on the Vanishing site, the books, and even some of the words like Fnords and Operation Mindfuck similar to Operation VFUCK, are all references to Discordianism. Even the final site I had found was associated with Discordianism, not Vanderstank. At the moment. Understand. So, uh, I do remember that he did tell me multiple times that I'm looking through every mention of ARG in the in the DMs of him, and most of it is just yelling at me saying that it was never it was less than an ARG, and I did, I made it up in my head apparently. I don't know. It's stupid, really really stupid but i mean i don't know what you expect when you're looking into this crap yeah i i think it probably i know that at least i found it on like the arg subreddit or something like that so somebody somewhere so, was part of it what really gets me is this is doing all this crap and um he <laughs> So I actually found out about Vanderstink through uh, Game Detectives, which is a server that is aimed to just catalog all of the ARGs mm -hmm. uh, and crap like that. But he was actually running the Vanderstink channel on there as a recruiter. So I really have the feeling that he knew it was an ARG in some sort. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I believe he told me that it was uh, Henry that proposed the idea of that, but I don't think it was. I guess with Daggett of Truth, that one, at least to me, seemed a little bit more ARG-ish. Yes, I believe that was... Um, well, all of the ARG really started when um, they had the idea of saying it Project Rabbit, but um, he, of course, I've already mentioned, hates uh, <laughs> everything about Daggett. Yeah. Um, Daggett is an interesting character. You know, he's the uh, the reporter. Have you ever looked into the Vanderleeks website? I tried to. Um, the Wayback Machine didn't save it, and as far as I can tell, like, the normal web is very much, like, it's just wiped. So I wasn't able to see a whole lot from the Vanderleeks. 
<laughs> so Vanner Lakes was a site that was run by Daga, as can be seen. And of course, good old um, Lewis. It had some blasphemy and hearsay about the company and was taken down eventually, of course. But these were, used, these were real um, articles that they had on the page that were written up. Uh, I guess they nobody uh, archived them. These were all written by Daggett uh, in Universe. Okay. And they just discussed, like, things behind the, the Vanders tank and uh, some lore-related things that were a bit messy. He was a rogue investigator that found his way into the company, is the best way to describe what he did. The entire Dag of Truth was basically his brother trying to help, uh, trying to force us to track him down. Disappeared. As far as I know, it's just because Henry got very bored one day and he's like, this should be a good idea. And it wasn't a good idea, but he got bored. <laughs> um, there's a, a lot of in-universe explanations for why it happened, but mm -hmm. all in all, it's mostly just because he got bored with the story that he had written himself into a corner with. I can understand that. <laughs> I really wish there was more to say on the topic, but that's <laughs> it. He's just really bored with everything. I, I mean, like I said, it makes sense. And I'm sure it was one of those things where more people, at least as far as I was aware, more people were interested in Vander Stank signing up. And it's possible that it's just... He is very, well, it's a bit inspiring, the story of Henry, because he's very, how would I put this? He's very involved with his work. He's very, um, he's very passionate for what he does. It seems like he does a lot, because, well, again, from what research I've done, it looked like he had done a lot for not only just Vanderstank, but, like, he had the book published on there, and then he also had, like, music. Again, I don't know. He's very passionate for this. <laughs> He's got a lot of... He's got a lot of free time. I was going to say he's got a lot of projects he's working on. So it's like it's kind of impressive to have all of this kind of going at once. It is, really. It's really inspiring, really, you, at the end of it. Do you know if it's like him or is it like, you know, a small group of people that are helping like keep Dennis Stank out? Uh, it's, or... Yes, of course. It's the executive board members. Basically, the uh, in-character lore that they put together is that they found out about old Dr. Vanderstank's work in a library one time, and they were like, hey, this is cool, let's make a thing out of it, and they made a thing out of it. So, um, the executives are just members who feel very passionately about it and want to work toward with him towards this crap. Okay. And he picks the executives based on, like, um the loyalty to the family and uh, how much they do towards it to make it a better place. Okay. Do you know if like he knows these people like in real life or is it just something like he finds them on like the internet or he it used to be a, I know. Okay. This I didn't tell you earlier. Uh, I know Vandersink used to be just a small group project they had up in uh, Vermont, not Vermont. It might've been Vermont um, up in New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. But it extended out into this worldwide. But I, I don't know if I should call it worldwide, but it was really widespread out the uh, phenomenon. But yeah, it used to just be like a small town laugh laugh thing. Gotcha. Okay, so at one point it was a, a smaller, you know, group, just a bunch of friends getting together, and then it just. Yeah, and then it just all spiraled into mayhem. Wonderful. As most things do. Yeah. Chris and I talked a lot over those five hours, and one of the things that he shared with me was the comprehensive history of Vanderstank. In 1660, the Church of Vanderstank is created by Dr. Vanderstank in Holland. Much is unknown about his life, but he was an eccentric entrepreneur who ran a number of businesses and enterprises, and was allegedly crucial to the creation of the sub-community that would later become the Vanderstank family. Later, in 1930, Dark Vanson High School in Linden, Vermont, burns due to a chemical explosion in an underground lab. The explosion was staged by Hazobio in order to allow for the sealing up of the lowest floor, known as the G Corridor, 
and construction of a new underground complex. All accounts of the high school are rewritten to say that it was built in this year. At some point, Hazobio decides to form Hazobio Inc. to easily attract aspiring scientists so that they can work on their secretive research projects. 1972. Charles Cave is born in a Vermont trailer park to Carl Cave and Margaret Cooper. In 1994, Charles Cave, now an aspiring young scientist, is recruited by Hazobio to be part of the G Corridor project. In 1996, Celia Cave is born to Charles Cave and an unnamed mother. Celia is the product of genetic manipulation. Her genetic mother is Verda Raum, born April 1861, and a descendant of Persephone Vanderstank, and ultimately, Dr. Vanderstank himself. In 2004, the Chronicle reports of the Dark Vanson College's new bioengineering project, aided by Hazo, is nearing its completion. In 2005, Charles Cave, now a professor at Dark Vanson College, is found dead in his home. His body was found seemingly unharmed and surrounded by candles, and holding a King of Hearts playing card. One thing I missed last time, and I didn't think to add until writing this, is that the King of Hearts is known by a nickname, the Suicide King, as it's commonly depicted with a sword going through his head. Hazobio explains that Charles committed suicide out of grief after performing a botched experiment on his wife which rendered her mute and barely conscious. It's likely that Charles was actually murdered because this botched experiment caused him to lash out at Hazobio and threatened to publicly expose them as a dangerous group that they are. Hazo Inc. is shut down at this time due to the unfavorable press, but most of their loyal members continue in secret under the names Hazobio Zaboth, the Iceberg Collective, and other names based on various bureaus of the company. In September 2011, Celia starts Dark Vanson High School, just down the road from the college. Her only friend, Taz Raleigh, introduces her to a secret abandoned corridor under the school that they secretly maintain and pass down from generation to generation. She begins sleeping down there as a hobby, and because she doesn't like going home to the quiet lady. The more she does this, the more crazy visions and hallucinations she begins to have. October 2011. It's revealed that the G Corridor is a part of an underground complex maintained by the members of Hazobio. Taz is a young recruit Hazobio picked up to befriend and lure down students. Celia was then given her first treatment for learning too much and asking too many questions. Initially, the treatment was successful, laying dormant until she got sight of the shape, at which point Celia became enlightened. 2012. Vanderstank Industries LTD is founded as a modern reincarnation of the ancient Vanderstank Dutch communal group formed by Dr. Vanderstank. It's suggested that this is a front for the struggling remains of Hazobio from the start. During this time, the remnant of Hazobio Bureau I childhood engineering via backward education and retroactive gratification are brought in to alter. Celia's memories, and re-educate her. 2013. Celia's story started to pick up in the Vanderstank game around this time, where she's trying to get her life back on track. A series of advertisements and phone calls implants the idea of a life improvement opportunity called Vanderstank. She's taken via car to Freddy's Diner, where she is presented a Vanderstank contract she doesn't remember signing, and is assigned V0111. Two thousand fourteen. V zero three zero zero to V zero three nine nine block of members mysteriously disappear. It's thought that they either engage in a mass suicide slash sacrifice ritual at the company's orders, or they rebelled upon learning of the company's true plans and were subsequently extinguished. 
Ramus Daggett, reporter for the Linden Chronicle, may have been a V0300 member. He is a reporter slash journalist doing his research on the family while writing an expose. His writings can be found on the Vanderleek site, which unfortunately hasn't been archived, but then later on Daggett of Truth. 2015. Lewis Cave, known as L.C. Barbet, begins trying to track down Celia. It's revealed that Lewis is fulfilling a sacred role of the Barbet, charged with protecting the family's secrets at all costs, even if he must resort to ethical gray areas, lying, manipulation, killing, and is only doing so because Celia stole and escaped with secretive personal treatment plans and blueprints. Taz Raleigh, her former best friend, calls himself Lewis Cave and insinuated he's her brother as he launches a plan to rescue her from the complex that he originally trapped her in. 2016 to present. Vanderstank 5.0 and Project Rabbit kick off, increasing public awareness of the family. Celia's whereabouts are intentionally vague. It's assumed that she's being held against her will due to something that went wrong with the treatment. She responds to her email with garbled excerpts and updates to I Believe Poppy, though it's rather clear that Vanderstank is actually the one behind the post. 2018, April 5th, not April 15th. Vanderstank Industries closes as a result of intense scrutiny about its ties with Hazo B.O., and the treatment of Celia Cave. But its most loyal members continue onward as the Vanderstank family of universal cosmic knowledge. One of the other things that Chris shared with me was a screenshot of what looks like a web page with the different research projects officially commissioned by the Church of Vanderstank. One of them looked familiar, Project Rabbit, which is described to, quote, to stimulate an influx of members and public attention by way of an ARG also known as Project Rabbit. Project Rabbit was declared a success after over 500 members signed up by the conclusion of Vanderstank 5.0 initiative. So whether Vanderstank liked it or not, they got 500 new members specifically because of the ARG. The one that got my heart pounding was Project Homunculus which was terminated in July of 2017 and is described to be a project to, quote, bring the recently deceased back to life using leftover equipment from earlier experiments provided by H0001 and H0002. The identities may be obscured, but if Occam's razor is to be believed, the V membership IDs mean Vanderstank then the H IDs seem to lead towards Hazobio. What I hadn't anticipated by our little Discord chat was the following days. Vanderstank was quiet for the most part, and nothing seemed to come of either the video or Chris and I talking. The problem came later that week on Wednesday. When leaving for work that day, I checked my Twitter and found out that we had caused a lot more damage than I had initially thought. By decree of the Church of Vanderstank, the V9.0 initiative is hereby terminated and shall not be resumed. The following members shall be purged immediately. All level 1 members. All members failing Article J. At least 75% of all remaining members. Membership shall return to an invite only basis. All members in protective custody of the family shall be separated legally from the family and shall once again be property of the church. All dates previously referred to as January 1st through 11th, 2021, shall be henceforth referred to as December 32. Through 43. Any references to these dates as January 1st through 11th shall be punishable by immediate termination. 
effective this day, January 12th, 2021. In the name of Caroline, it shall so be. Like Celia, Chris and I found some things that we didn't enjoy finding. One of them was exactly how Chris was able to get my personal email. I thought somehow it was connected to my YouTube account, but I soon learned that it was much more invasive. Chris at one point had the user logs of each member up to a certain point. My V0 number was one of them. He was able to know my name because I was dumb enough to give an internet cult my real name, my email address, exactly how much Vandacoin I had in my account, what my background on the OS was, and even what my standing with the family was. Moreover, he was able to see the last time I logged in, and my IP address, which gave him the state that I lived in. For some of these accounts, they had even more information. For newer members, when they signed up, they had to fill out a bio about themselves, in which members would write a small essay about them and why they even wanted to join the family. Now, in hindsight, with everything that has come forward, I don't believe it's of any malintent, despite it being attached to an internet cult that supposedly terminated a large portion of their members. I think, in all honesty, it's naivete. Both from the players and the site's administrators. It's clear that the creators never meant for this site to be as big as it was. However, it exploded as people started investigating the mystery. More and more people joined out of curiosity when the site was never made for that. If there is a moral to Vanderstank, and it's definitely not the one I thought it would be. It would be to watch who you give your information to. Most of the sites with ARGs aren't given a lot of security and are probably not given too much thought as to what it does with your information. Even with ARGs where it's implied that it's just a game, you have to be careful and protect yourself and your information. Learn from my mistake. I now have a pissed off supposed internet cult who has all of my information. I now have to move out of state and grow a beard. And if I go missing, it's all Chris's fault. Mushroom 